Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move and for today's episode in the Premier League series we've got Southampton here uh, tactics and team guides so just to give you a general idea we'll be covering obviously the tactics and uh, trying to set you up with the best formation best instructions and all that sort of business just the overall tactics really uh, to get uh, as much out of the Southampton squad as, as possible really um, and obviously team guide is just very uh, generally we're going to be talking about maybe some players who you should keep uh, players maybe that you need to move on uh, who you should look to to try and build your side around and um, maybe some areas that need some strengthening uh, in your squad so um, Southampton uh, we can talk about their history just very briefly very interesting team to take over uh, they're a club with a decent amount of history, to be fair to them. Uh, kind of gone up and down here, but they've uh, come back from being in the Skybet League 1 and have done it quite successfully, two consecutive uh, promotions. And they find themselves in the Premier League and performing well, going as high as 6th as well, which is very, um, you know, uh, respectable, I suppose. And uh, they managed 8th last season, but obviously the, game, the aim is to get Europe, European level football Europa League football really uh, you don't have any this season so you know you have to try and gather your strength and try and cons uh, consistently qualify for Euro European football and uh, try and take this uh, decent squad into a next level um, so in terms of very general things the rivals of Portsmouth Bournemouth Brighton Liverpool and Reading uh, there's also this oh, okay no the, that, that derby is uh, with Portsmouth so you only really would face them possibly in cup competitions so no real rivals I suppose these ones they do count but not so much as the much as the fierce ones but in terms of history uh, an FA Cup to their name uh, 1976 Skybet League one in 1960 and that's kind of it in general uh, so you really do want to add some trophies to your game possibly some cup competitions do not take the cup competitions like lightly uh, you're winning the FA Cup or Europa uh, or the uh, League Cup, sorry, will actually get Europe League football. So uh, I think the board will be very happy with that. Let's try and see what their expectations are. So top half football, they don't even expect European football. This should be very much doable, ending anywhere above 10th. Um, and uh, you should definitely aim for European level football, if you ask me. FA Cup uh, reached the fifth round. You enter the third and the League Cup's not even considered important. Um, so if you ask me, give it your all in the League Cup. You never know how far you can go and you can try and win it and get Europa League football if you do fail in the Premier League. Um, but that's kind of it. Let's try and actually have a quick look at where the season preview expects you to finish so media thinks that you're finishing ninth i think that's a fair bet i reckon you've got uh, you'll do better than everton west ham you know what maybe not maybe not so much everton but you should be able to do better than west ham if you just squeeze in into seventh as well you can get europa league football but anyways um so one of the first things I like to do in terms of uh, you know setting up my squad and all that sort of business, I actually try and look at my coaching staff and try and see who's got the best judgment of ability, uh, who I can trust. So Matt Hill, I heard head of youth development. It's always a good thing to have your head of youth development, uh, you know, having the best judgment of ability. The good news is his judgment of potential ability is also really good. Now I wouldn't say I wouldn't be too concerned of judgment of a potential ability because right now we're just trying to see who are the best players at the club at the moment, not who's going to be the best. Um, but obviously that's always a good thing to have. You should definitely sort out your staff as well, but that's a different story entirely. Another thing I like to do is actually have a quick look at the under 23s and under 18s. See if there's anyone overage, so anyone above 23 really, 24 and so on. It looks like you've got a couple of them, but uh, two of them are on loan and Stuart Taylor is a goalkeeper. So let's just move him to the senior squad, we can decide what to do with him then. Another thing is sort out the ability and see if anyone's ready for the first team. It looks like there's Josh Sims who's close uh, to being ready for first team football. He's a Skybet Championship player. Um, Matthew Target is a decent shout but again a Championship player only. I think he's played for Southampton before hasn't he? Yeah a couple appearances but he is Championship level so uh, I wouldn't recommend moving him to your first team. That's kind of it. So it looks like there's no one really to move. Uh, so. Uh, Another thing I like to do is actually just have a general look at the squad as a whole. Uh, not really go into each player, we'll be doing that anyways, but just have a quick look and see what positions uh, that do we have, generally have and uh, where you know that can help us sort of sort out our formation. When I know my formation, then I can know what type of football we might be able to play. Um, I feel like that dictates it a little bit. Uh, um, you know your formation you have to kind of you can't play a 4-4-2 for example and play possession football that doesn't really make too much sense um, you might pull it off but it, it doesn't make logical sense you, you'd be very uh, lucky I suppose to actually have that figured out but anyways that's a different story entirely so just having a quick look 
Uh, you've got a bunch of centre backs. Uh, you've got one right back, two left backs, a defensive midfielder, a couple of central midfielders, a bunch of wingers. Far too many, even if you're playing a winger formation, uh, and then just two strikers to the to your name to your squad. Um, so it looks like you're kind of suited for possibly a maybe a 4-2-3-1, but there's no attacking midfielder, so 4-3-3 possibly. Uh, and that's I think I feel like that's what that's most logical. So uh, if we have a quick look at the best rated players in your squad, this is the assistant manager's report. I've gone through each player individually just to quickly look at ability. Uh, and by the looks of it, um, you know these are the players that we've squeezed in. So everyone marked here already who's got a, already got um, a position is a good player for the Premier League or above in rating. So I feel like that's the kind of the standard we have to reach for. I don't think we should be aiming for decent players anymore. We should be above that uh, considering we were a top half team and was trying to squeeze for Europa League football. So I've only put in those players, but we have decided that a 4-3-3 seems to make the most sense. Um, we don't have an attacking midfielder necessarily. Playing a right winger would suit Dusan Tadic in his best position. Uh, Gabbiadini is actually the only good uh, striker in the squad. So all these things kind of tie in together and it made sense to go for 4-3-3. Now the assistant manager uh, suggested the 4-2-3-1 with two defensive midfielders, um, but I just felt like, for example, Lemina can play as a defensive midfielder, um, but he's probably best as a central midfielder and that kind of suits him a little bit more. Um, so just those kind of decisions uh, came together and it made sense to go with a 4-3-3. Uh, I've left some positions that need in, in uh, you know uh, that you might want to invest in, but we'll go through each position, but at least now we know our formation and that way we can know what you know what areas might need investment. So, we've got a squad of let me guess 25, nope, 24 players. Uh, I like to have a squad of 22, a starting 11 of leading star or world-class players and a backup 11 of youngsters who can become, who have potential to become leading star or world-class players. And that way, uh, you've got a nice balance to your squad. You've got senior players and youth players all gelling together, mix of experience and youth. And I feel like that works best. Obviously, that's something you have to build towards eventually. It doesn't happen in one season, uh, especially with the ability sense. You can't necessarily just sell off anyone here who's a good player and go like, no, I'm only aiming for leading player. Um, that doesn't make too, too much sense. You have to build it up so first aim for good player and then aim for leading and so on and if you're like a relegation candidate you aim for decent and then aim for good and so on and so forth um so bearing that in mind that's why i left out some positions that maybe we didn't have uh, good players we we'll probably have decent but not good players and so you know that's a little bit of areas concern but anyways now we know our formation so goalkeepers we need two but we've got three here uh, fraser foster the I england international i think he's got a cap to his name he's got six of them uh, good play for most Premier League sides, definitely our starting 11 goalkeeper and a very decent choice. Uh, you've got Alex McCarthy as well, a championship player, which is a bit of worry because he's not even a leading championship, he's just a good player. Uh, Southampton bought him last season for 4 million, you could sell him off for double that profit if you tried. And I think that would be the most logical thing to do because he's not a good enough backup goalkeeper at all. Um, I think his wages weren't too nice either, 40k for a backup is not nice uh, sort of money to be having spending. Skybet League 2 player, Stuart Taylor, the one that was in the under 23 so moving one as much as possible 5k wages is a stupid amount of money to pay it's not a lot in terms of southampton's wages but it's still a stupid amount for uh, that type of ability player so I, th I think if you move on both these goalkeepers you can easily get a backup youngster goalkeeper who can eventually overtake fraser foster and who should have more uh, potential ability than um Fraser Foster, of course. So Fraser Foster is just good. You can get in a youngster who will eventually become a leading player and that will be a good balance to your team there. If you wanted to be absolutely ruthless, you could bring in a leading goalkeeper and have Fraser Foster as a backup. Um, but he's considered a key player, has a ton of wages and I think that might upset the balance a little bit. Um, you know, he, he'll get unhappy and maybe some squad players will complain that he's unhappy and so on and so forth. Uh, just, you know, it's all up to you the way you manage your squad. Just, these are just suggestions really. Right back, so it looks like you've only got Cedric. Let's have a quick look at the others in terms of the positions. Sometimes centre-backs can play as right backs, but it doesn't look like it. Nope, so you've only got one right back. So, uh, you know, one of the things I like to do in my squad is actually see where, where my numbers are missing and then invest in that first. And then I can start to think about, oh, this player's not good enough. Let me bring in a better player for the same position. So you might not necessarily want to sell off you know, you've got three here, so sell off one of them, that's for sure. But then you want to spend whatever money you have first on actually bringing the right back because you do need 
depth there and that's more important than actually getting a player of ability once you have that depth then you can start to improve the overall squad ability so right back seems to be a bit of an area of concern you've only got one of them um, and uh, so Cedric is your starting uh, 11 right back very good one uh, a good player from his Premier League side suits the rest of the team and um, Fullbacks are a bit in uh, short supply, to be honest. You can bring in a youngster with the potential to overtake Cedric, who's a Portuguese international, 25 years of age. He's not too old himself, uh, not too young. Uh, sorry, yeah, not too old himself, actually. He's a bit young. Um, so maybe the, uh, the better balance might be to bring in a youngster who's ready for Premier League action. Right. Oh, this is what I always talk about when I say youngsters. Don't bring in a championship player and then go like, oh, he's a youngster. He's going to overtake. No, no, he has to be ready for Premier League action first. Um, and then, you know, better better potential ability than Cedric. Uh, once more, you can be absolutely ruthless and bring in a right back who is a first team player, a leading player or a star player for the Premier League side. Or even world class if you can actually pull that off. Um, uh, and then have Cedric as a backup. But once more, high wages and he's expecting first team football. So just be very careful about how these things are supposed to be. The, the, the aims that I set you are supposed to be long term aims that you eventually build up to. Um, centre backs, you've got far too many, which uh, is good in the sense that you can sell them off and maybe invest in the right back but let's see if you've actually got the quality so our central defensive pair is going to be wesley and virgil van dijk um a, a one's here a good player for most premier league size with potential to be a leading player so that's really good to have uh, and the other is a leading player outright and that's also something else that's good to have so those two are your first team players you've got jack stephens here as well who's a championship player so he's not going to be good enough uh, yoshida is a decent player for most premier league sides and uh, florin is a championship player and jan is a Sky Bet League 1. So th three of these six are actually not even good enough for the Premier League. You'd be better off um, moving Jack on loan to a championship club and the others as well, like move him out on loan. Yoshida is the only one who can be a decent backup, but you do want to move away from decent players. Uh, so if you did have the money that you're spending on him, on 50k wages and that 10 million value, you'd be better off you know, using that money to bring in a youngster who has that potential. Uh, also, once more, you could be absolutely ruthless and bring in another leading player to uh, you know partner Virgil van Dijk in central defense and just have Wesley as a rotation option but once more Dutch international key player 60k wages he's expecting a bunch of football and um, considering he has a potential to be a leading player you might want to show him a bit of faith this season uh, if he doesn't become a leading player then maybe you can consider bringing in someone better but I would say that your central defensive the initial starting 11 pair is quite good enough for the squad as is um, your concern is your depth in central defence. Uh, you only have literally got one player who's good enough for the Premier League. And even then, we're trying to improve on that. So another area that you might want to invest in is centre-back. All right, so let's move on to left-backs. You've got Ryan Bertrand and Sam McQueen. The looks of it is Sam McQueen's not good enough, and he isn't. He's a Skybet Championship player, and his improvement will only be a decent player. So you do have a bit of a decision to make. Do you sell him off right now, 22 years of age, 5.75 million and 18K wages? Or do you loan him out and hope that he becomes better than his actual prediction? Because sometimes they can push into a good Premier League player instead of a decent one. So it's really up to you. But your first choice is a very good one in Ryan Bertrand. A good player for most Premier League sides. A bit of a surprise, I thought he'd be leading. I think last season he was anyways, or last edition rather. Um, but this, this time around, FM18, just a good player. Once more, first team football, 70K wages. You could be, again, absolutely ruthless and bring in a leading left back who can become a first teamer and uh, you know let Ryan Bertrand be a, a decent backup or you could probably do the smarter thing send uh, Sam McQueen on loan now this is where if you're going to go with a youngster route this is where you have a bit of decision to make you send Sam McQueen out on loan because he's not good enough for Premier League now do you bring in a loan player who's good enough for the Premier League just until Sam McQueen you know once Sam McQueen comes back next season that loan player leaves and then hopefully Sam McQueen is good enough and that way you have a decent backup or do you do, which I recommend because I wouldn't want a decent Premier League player, I think I want to move away from that. Uh, and my suggestion is to bring in a youngster with plenty of potential um, who can overtake Ryan Bertrand eventually. So I would say just, you're only really moving Sam McQueen out on loan to try and increase his value because, you know, he becomes a better player. Um, but, you know, you, you have to consider 22 years of age, how likely is it for him to improve that much? You might want to just sell him off from the get-go. Uh, all of these are key decisions. But for right now, you've got the numbers at least. And the same thing with centre-back, at least you have numbers. So that's things to consider as well. Um, you may have to invest in other areas first where you're short of numbers. So, 
that can leave us with central midfielders. So Oriol, Romeo, uh, you got Pierre here, James Ward-Prowse, Lemina. I think those are your four. You really need six because you need two defensive midfielders and four central midfielders to have any sort of depth. So you've shortened numbers here. So once more, forget any of the other positions. It's only right back and central midfield and defensive midfield that need investment. So those are the, your key areas of concern. So have a quick look at if any of these wingers can actually play in central midfield. Steven Davis, I don't know why he's even a winger. Not natural there, but apparently it's his most comfortable role. Um, he could do it quite well if you ask me to be honest. I don't even know wide midfielders use vision. Apparently they do. I only assumed why playmakers do. But anyway, <clears throat> sorry about that. But anyways, central midfielder. I think you can add him. He's a first. He's expecting first team football at least. Um, in terms of ability, I think he's just a decent player for most Premier League sides. Oh, he's a good player. How did I miss him then? That is an unusual mistake to make. All right, that's my mistake. Um, that makes even our decision even better so we'll play him in central midfield as one of the starting players and there you go that's your center midfield sort of at least so you're right back and the defensive midfield is needed redmond's definitely a winger tadic winger jeremy winger and apparently a bit of a wing back as well but considering no positioning marking tackling is decent but nah i wouldn't play in there Buffal. Yeah, all right, so there you go. So right back and defensive midfield are definite areas of concern. But at least your starting 11 midfield is sorted, defensive midfield is cent uh, uh, central midfield as well. Uh, Remio is going to be a very good defensive midfielder, a good player for most Premier League sides. You can bring in a young sub potential or once more, you can be ruthless and bring in a star player. But just bear in mind, again, several areas where you'll be concerned, you'll be upsetting your players because they are expecting first team football. So I think bringing in a young sub potential makes a little bit more sense. Um, Stephen Davis, he's 32 years of age. His likelihood that is his current ability is going to drop heavily uh, within two seasons' time. Um, the Northern Irish international, but uh, you know, I, th I feel like you should bring in a youngster. Nah, no, nah, actually, he's a good player, so keep him for now. Um, and then you've got Lemina as well. So that, that's your starting depth, and Lemina can become a leading player as well. In terms of your backup depth, though, there is a bit of concern. So uh, Pierre and James Ward-Prowse are the ones. Uh, Ward-Prowse is a decent player for most Premier League sides, and he has potential to be leading. So I think that's decent uh, backup. It would be better if he's a good player, but he, he's really capable as a backup there. And I think Pierre is the same as well. So I think in terms of central midfield depth, you're sorted, and hopefully these two can become leading players and overtake. Uh, and you know f strengthen that midfield and especially you would want one of these to step up within a season or two's time to, to overtake Steven Davis's position the problem is though that I think James Ward-Prowse is expecting first team football no he's a rotational option all right that's perfect the, there you have a nice little bit of squad depth uh, Romeo and a uh, right back is uh, back up to Romeo and a backup to Cedric is what's needed so far desperately everything else obviously in terms of ability you can eventually build up to it Wingers though, that leaves us with Redmond, Tadic, Jeremy and Buffar. So you've got the numbers, you've got four. I thought you had too many, but apparently you've got four, which is good. Um, I was counting Steven Davis as a winger initially. Uh, Manu Manolo Gabbiadini can be a very capable inside forward if you ask me. His pace and acceleration is uh, kind of low for an inside forward, but it's still good enough to do the job. Um, but I considered, because we don't have a really capable striker, that he should possibly play in the striker position. And that way, if he plays on the wing, he's not clashing with... Um, you know, if he's playing on the wing, he'd be clashing with Tadic, because Tadic is an inside forward as well. If we play him as an attacking midfielder, he's very capable, but we're not going with that formation. It kind of made more sense um, to go with the 4-3-3. But I think, you know, it really is up to you guys, because I feel like maybe you could force the 4-2-3-1 a little bit if you wanted to. But I feel like um, because of our team, we are a mid-table team. So playing a 4-2-3-1 might be a bit too adventurous, but we're playing a 4-3-3 that's still a bit attacking at the same time. So that suits us a bit more. We've got that defensive cover. We can play against top teams knowing full well our midfield's good and well stocked rather than playing a 4-2-3-1 and being very exposed uh, and, uh, you know, uh, taken advantage of basically. But that's just, you know, my suggestion. Some people can play 4-2-3-1 and make it very defensive anyway. So it's up to you. But I would go with the 4-3-3 and play players in their natural positions and in their natural roles as well. So we're going with inside forward for Tadic. Um, and that's kind of it. So wingers, uh, Nathan Redmond is a decent backup. Uh, he can become a good 
Premier League player. He's an English uh, player as well, so you do want to try and hang on to him. Hopefully, he can, he can push past that good Premier League player ability. Um, and then you've got Tadic as a right winger. Jeremy as a championship player, so this is a bit of an area of concern. And also, he's another right winger that we don't need. We don't need that many... You know, we've got three right wingers here. Uh, if we did push uh, Redmond as the backup to Buffal instead, then that may, may, that might make a little bit of sense to have Jeremy as well. But he's not he's not even a Premier League player, so we don't we shouldn't even consider his number in the squad. In truth, um, Buffal though is a decent player for most Premier League sides, and he can become better. Um, he's a rotational option though. He's a bit on high wages, which is a concern. So if you ask me, you need a left winger starting 11 player. So be absolutely ruthless. Bofal's not expecting too much football either. So you might as well invest in a leading left winger. Uh, or a good left winger at least if you, if you can't get a leading one in. Because I know it'll be a bit tough. Um, and in terms of the right wing, you've actually got some decent depth in uh, Redman and Tadic. Um, and yeah, so move on Pied and get in a leading um, left winger and that way you've got Buffal as a decent backup. And that's it. Uh, strikers, we've got Shane Long and Chris Austin. Uh, Shane Long is a decent player for most Premier League sides and Charlie Austin is just a decent player. So you've got two decent ones and uh, one's on rotation. Charlie Austin is expecting first team football. Okay, no, you've bought him a while ago, so you could really move him on. If you ask me, move on Shane Long since he's 30 years of age, susceptible to injuries, I think. Or oh, no, was that Charlie Austin? Oh, that's tough, man. All right, well, either way, move on Shane Long, 30 years of age, 16.75 million and 60k wages. You're not going to get a better opportunity to sell him than now because he will really start to decline in about three seasons' time, possibly. Um... And it just makes a little bit more sense to move him on and try and bring in a youngster with potential who can overtake Charlie Austin. But if you, again, if you wanted to, you could be absolutely ruthless um, and uh, sell, uh, you know, Ch Shane Long or even Charlie Austin. Both of them have the same ability in truth. I was just saying Shane Long because he's older and not necessarily fitting our tactics. Um, and, you know, a little bit high wages for his age and whatnot. So uh, you could be ruthless once more and bring in a good or leading striker instead of a backup to Charlie Austin. I think a uh, striker position is a bit of an area of concern. Um, actually, you know what? I completely forgot. I don't know why, but I, actually, I completely forgot that Gabbiadini is there. So we've got a, a good player there already, all right, in Gabbiadini. So these two are actually considered the backups, yeah? Um, so you do, that means you've got three strikers, you only need two, so you're selling one of these anyway, so might as well move on Ch Shane Long. Now the question is, do you consider Char Charlie Austin as a decent backup? Is he good enough for your team? If you ask me, you'd be better off selling him and bringing a youngster with potential. It's 70k wages, 20 million, you might upset the apple cart a little bit here uh, by trying to sell him, um, but if you bring in a young uh, striker who can compete with Gabbiadini, then that might be a better... Um, you know, depth to your squad and you would also find yourself hopefully in the future with a leading striker and uh, that would be a little bit better for your team I think if, you know just selling these two strikers you've got 60k and 70k there that's already a huge amount of wages freed up um, so that's it so real areas of concern right back in defensive midfield fulfill those areas first and then start to invest elsewhere and moving players on and whatnot if you ask me I always say this in every episode do not sell first and then buy because you're not 100% sure who you're buying even if you've got someone shortlisted uh, you know maybe the contract fails or something goes through they they change their mind they're not interested anymore and then suddenly you short on numbers you've got some of some of the cash possibly uh, and then you know you, you don't have anyone that you can really invest it in uh, and sometimes obviously you sell a player off thinking you're getting 10 million but the board has a different you know transfer budget system whatever and you only get 70% of that for example so you don't actually have all that money and you've already set a player aside all that sort of business so it's a lot cleaner a lot easier to do um, is to invest in the player first and then sell the player that you don't want later on uh, move them on afterwards and um, only really sell first when you're 100% sure you're getting the player you want or when you've got excess numbers for example when you've got Stuart Taylor, Fraser Foster and Alex McCarthy you don't want all three anyway so you can very confidently sell one of them and be alright you, you don't have to think about investing first so that's kind of it um, so I feel like that covers the squad depth in terms of the tactics uh, we, we already mentioned we're going with a 4-3-3 so we're playing a control sort of football I feel like it might be a bit adventurous for a Southampton side but um, we're playing more direct passing and uh, that should suit us a little bit considering we're a, um, a so-called smaller team than the big six or whatever you want to call them the top six in the Premier League um, so the whole 
method that we're playing football in is actually just root one sort of football. Um, in terms of you know the flexibility and tactics, you can go with a mentality of uh, control or attacking. We've gone con with control because we want to try and avoid being counter-attacked on. Uh, structured team shape is just what I, just, I naturally lean towards because I like the players' roles uh, to do the job rather than uh, you know team instructions so I feel like that kind of goes hand in hand when you have I don't play with too many team instructions and um, structured lets your player each player do according to the role just listen to whatever the role is telling them whereas when you play a fluid system the whole team attacks and defends together and so it might make a little bit more sense to actually have a, a bunch of team instructions um, so yeah just really simple ones more direct passing use offside trap use type marking there's another option of going route one but I feel like that's a bit too much especially because we are playing the 4-3-3 as well that's not very you know it's not 4-4-2 type of football so I've gone with more direct passing as well and you can definitely you know put a ton of other uh, instructions as well but this is just how I like to keep it as simple as possible so that explains the mentality type of football we've already explained as well uh, you're looking for players who can dribble who can um, sort of roam good movement um, creative players are nice as well and we've got a bit of uh, strength in midfield as well with these two closing opposition down uh, opposition players down and uh, you know tackling hard making sure we're not too soft as well uh, but yeah you've got the creative players we want to go with players who actually really cross more often um, because we are playing sort of route one more direct sort of type of football uh, so a winger is actually much suited that's why I've got it set here as a winger so you do want to invest as a, in, into a winger here uh, Tadic as an inside forward doesn't suit us that much in terms of because you know inside forwards don't cross too much uh, but hopefully a winger here should help that and the wing back here will also cross a lot as well um, crosses for, from deep are good as well and that's why we've got fullback on support uh, that helps with the more direct type of football too so uh, there you go that's why we've got this sort of depth so complete forward on attack will uh, complement the Mesla on attack as well them to uh, more of a direct partnership you would expect rather than a complete forward relying on the winger on attack or inside forward you can expect these to be these two to be working together um, uh, Gabbiadini he's not entirely comfortable with the role according to uh, football manager he's suited to inside forward but um, I think attribute wise he covers that very well so he'll be a very capable complete forward and it suits our tactic complete forwards they dribble a lot they hold the ball up risky passes all that sort of business that we like and that suits us much better uh, and Mesler of course more risky passes Musin's Charles roam from positions good movement helps us got natural winger like we mentioned you do eventually want to win move to a winger in this position as well but for now we're working what we've got and that's why we're playing Tadic as an inside forward complementing that uh, wing back on attack just makes sense to over you know overlap the inside forward uh, and in that sense you've got two attacking um, pos duties I suppose together it, it suits best I feel um, you know you should have two support ones and two attacking ones whenever you're playing a 4-3-3 I feel like that works best and also him playing on the left suits him because he's gonna you know shoot with his preferred foot on the right if you play him on the right he might not necessarily get that many good shots in so he's more likely to score from this position he has no no side preference either ball winning midfield is a bit of an area of concern because uh, Davis I didn't consider that Davis was actually ready for first team I really can't believe how I missed him entirely um, a deep line playmaker on support doesn't suit us either we already got someone holding uh, Mesla we already got a Mesla advanced playmaker we don't want to be doing that um, you know what an advanced playmaker might be a decent option box to box maybe okay Carrillero but the truth is we actually need the ball winning midfielder to put this tie everything together I know we've got a defensive midfielder on support but believe it or not uh, on, on defense sorry but believe it or not they don't actually um, tackle harder we need someone who actually tackles harder so that's why we're going with a ball winning midfielder uh, support role um, so maybe you know try Davis in that position I reckon he could do a decent job let me have a look he looks like the type of player midfielder who could do everything um, and when you bring in a backup youngster for him I think or do we not have a backup youngster for him yeah strength is the only thing missing um, and acceleration is going to be an issue no matter where you play him in, in midfield in truth I think he'll be a decent ball winning midfielder, but if you feel like you have to move away from that, um, let's see what you could do. Maybe you could play a ball winning midfielder on defend for Romeo. I feel like he'd do that very capable here. Uh, it would still be able to hold the midfield down quite comfortably. And then you can play Davis in a more comfortable role, possibly, as you don't want a deep line playmaker because that's too many players holding. Um, but you could do a box to box midfielder. Uh, you could work with a roaming playmaker if you wanted to. Uh, Mesler is an option as well moving into 
sorry, not Mesler, rather, it's Carrillero, sorry, is what I'm talking about. Uh, suits the midfield three option as well. Carrillero is uh, really good in midfield three. Um, and I, you know, those it really depends on where you, how you'd like to use him. Advanced playmaker on support with decent option as well. He can do that role. I feel like advanced playmakers on support they do dribble, don't they? They don't shoot too much though, which is what we're trying to avoid. We want players who shoot a lot as well because we're playing direct football. Uh, box to box midfielder might be a decent shout. Let's have a quick look at him as well, actually. Box to box midfielder, how are you there? Nah, he doesn't have the physical, the strength, finishing, long shots. Strength I'm not too worried about. Some of the physicals are a bit of concern, but uh, finishing and long shots is a bit of an issue for box to box midfielder. Maybe a carry there. Again, a little bit like the ball winning midfielder, the only concern is strength. So, uh, central midfielder on support. Oh, he could do that really well. Uh -huh, other than heading. Maybe go with a central midfielder on support. That's a bit of a thing you could go with roaming playmakers the same as a box to box midfielder just a bit more attacking i suppose so yeah i mean it really depends on you know you can try them out in the different roles i feel like you could do a number of them so try them out uh, the teamwork option helps us i feel like instead of playing two players with uncomfortable roles it might make a little bit more sense to just play romeo in his pref preferred role which is defensive midfielder on defend and just have one player who's playing uncomfortably as a ball winning midfielder on support i feel like that them playing ball winning midfielders on support they can hold when they play on defend duty but I just feel like they're more useful when you play them on support. Uh, especially with the role, I think, on support, they win the ball back high up and they counter-attack for your team. So I feel like it works a bit better. Uh, but it's really down to preferences. So that kind of explains the tactics as a whole. We've got ball-playing defender in uh, Wesley. Uh, apparently Van Dijk is a defensive centre-back, or that's what he's most comfortable with. But very capable as a ball-playing defender as well. We don't want two of them, though. Um, so we're going to be playing uh, Wesley since he's apparently a natural as a ball playing defender. He is definitely better than uh, you know Van Dijk in that position uh, or in that role rather. And we don't want a d d completely defensive centre back. I don't think you could get away with it, but I'm not too much of a fan of it. So I've gone with the central defender. If you feel like his decision making con and concentration is a, a, a bit of a concern for your team, then maybe you go back to the defensive center back, but I, I would advise try and avoid that as much as possible. So that's kind of it in terms of the tactics and team guide. We're gonna cover a little, a few small things very briefly. Staff, uh, I've already talked about that you need to improve them. You're quite low in a number of these positions. You need to be mid table at least. Uh, you do wanna be winning a couple of these things like you know maybe have the best goalkeeping coach in the division, so on and so forth. Uh, training, I like to have it on uh, high and balanced during preseason and then average and balanced during uh, the season itself. Match tactics all the way through preseason. When the season starts, I just follow whatever my scout tells me. Schedule, you've got a decent number of friendlies here, six of them and some good op or decent opposition rather. Um, but you do want from next season to try and sort these out yourself. Have like, th if you have six, I like to have six friendlies, three of them at home and three on tour in a different country where the, I can get some merchandise in um, by going on tour. Competitions we already talked about, scouting completely revamped. And for a Southampton team, you do want to at least be covering Europe, which is apparently what you're doing already for senior and youth packages, which is good. If you can afford it, go into world for both and that would be better, of course. Transfers, no ins or outs, so that's good to see. We already talked about the club history. The board are happy to give you 30 million in in the transfer budget. I was gonna say in wages for some reason. Um, but if you ask me, I like to have it in the middle leading towards transfer budget. So for me, more realistically, you have 18 million and then you've got about 300K in wages as well. So that way your, your finances are a bit safe and at the same time, you've got a decent amount of money. So you need two players. So you'd, ha you'd only have 9 million to spend. So it might be a bit of concern, but if you do move those excess number of players that we talked about, you might be able to actually have enough money to bring those players in. Uh, and it looks like with the money that you have, you won't be able to invest in f ready first team players and uh, you will have to rely on youth prospects coming in. Um, in terms of finances though, 61 million. So if you did want to, you could easily spend the 30 million and be okay. You're in the Premier League, you'll get Premier League money as well. So this is going to improve a lot. Um, let's have a quick look at debt. No debt as well. That's very good. Financial status is rich, bear in mind. Um, projection is ve looks poor for you. That makes no sense. Why is your balance dropping? You've got no debt. Maybe it's a fans issue. So you do. it looks like you really do have to try and save the club by getting into Europa League football. Um, the good news is that your transfer budget's going up, but for some reason, despite you know the balance going down, you're still getting a high transfer budget, which makes no sense. Um, but yeah, with TV money and Premier League money, you should be okay. This is a bit strange. I don't think I've seen this with anyone else. 
uh, or at least with any team that doesn't have debt. Maybe you're not bringing in enough fans, but getting Europa League football should hopefully help you there. Under 23s and under 18s, youth players to look out for. We already talked about the players who are close to first team action, like Josh Sims. He's a winger as well, suit us very well. You could consider just bringing in a lone winger. We talked about investing in the left wing position, so maybe you could bring in a lone winger until Josh Sims is ready and then promote him next season into the first team. That might help you. A winger with low stamina is a bit of concern though. Anyways. We're talking about potential though, so who's got the best potential? Looks like Callum Slattery is going to be an incredible player for your first team once he actually makes a step up. Attacking midfielder by trade, but you could possibly retrain him in some different positions that might suit you a bit better, like a Mesler. Uh, his attributes need to be improved a little bit, but at 18 years of age he should be top player. Uh, I reckon you could really just consider these four as your best bet players. It's good to see fullbacks there. Uh, that will complement your wingers when you eventually do move to wingers in the right and left wing positions. Uh, strike on the defensive forward might not, uh, not might not suit you too well. That was a bit tough to say for some reason. Um, but uh, you could work with that as well um, as a defensive forward. Uh, but yeah, these are the four maybe to keep an eye on. Try and give them as, as much loans as possible and you know action and all that sort of business. But don't do not write off any of these players you never know some of them might actually exceed their potential and some of these might actually you know not even meet their expectations so uh you know yeah you, you just have to try and give every youngster as much faith as possible but yeah i think we've covered everything so if you did enjoy today's episode that'll be the end of it and uh, if you did enjoy it then please do hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2018 uh, and as always guys thank you all very much for watching